This week is all about stars in space and photographing the galaxy. <music> to do since the beginning of the year is get into astrophotography and it's actually been something I've been wanting to do for the last few years but it's been a process. I've been wanting to photograph the Milky Way and get into some astrophotography since about 2010 and I think that around the time that it kind of started becoming more of a thing uh, in the photography world. I might be mistaken though so don't quote me on that but I definitely started to take notice to it then. Um, but I guess between time, life getting in the way, and the very uh, specific circumstances that are required to even photograph the night sky, it definitely makes it tricky. The basics with astrophotography and any time you're ever going to be photographing the stars, you have to have a few kind of basic things from Mother Nature. One thing is definitely a clear sky. Second thing is, is you, if you're wanting a really dark sky, uh, especially to see the Milky Way or having the maximum amount of stars just in general, you can't have moonlight. So not only do you have to have a clear night, but it also needs to be around the time of a new moon or to plan your shot when the moon has set. And also another thing you have to keep in mind is humidity levels and like atmospheric conditions. So even if it's a clear night, if it has too much humidity in the air or dust or just like things floating around, smog, stuff like that, that all can interfere with your shots. So that's also things you have to consider. And then lastly, you need to get to a place that's dark enough to actually see stars. So where I'm living, which I live in Ohio, if you're pretty much anywhere east of the Mississippi River, it's almost impossible to get a completely dark sky, which is disappointing. It makes me very sad, to be honest. In order to make sure that you're actually gonna have the conditions that are required to do any sort of even mediocre astrophotography, you wanna do a couple of basic things as far as research goes. First thing is obviously go to uh, whatever your favorite weather website is. I use weather.com and uh, I actually will go on weather.com, pull up the radar, and then actually see what the cloud coverage is going to be because even if it's not stormy, you don't want any clouds. Like You need it to be completely clear and you can actually... Uh, you know go zoom into any area and then also like let it play out the future so if you're gonna be in a specific place at 1 a.m. or midnight you can see what the cloud coverage is gonna be in the area you're planning to be at that time the next thing as far as research goes is I use a website called dark site finder and it's basically a website that breaks down the light pollution across the entire world. So wherever you're gonna be taking pictures and wherever you want to be, uh, you can actually see what the light pollution is. So obviously I am actually just north of Cincinnati. And if you look here, Cincinnati has really, really bright light. Anything that's red and then orange and yellow shows the highest uh, light pollution. And then the blue areas, green areas, uh, that is all usually the darkest. And then obviously if there's just gray patches and there's no color at all, that's actually the clearest. So I was aiming to try and find a place that had green or like really light yellow just because um, I didn't have time to drive, you know, two plus hours to go take pictures and then come back. So. Um, all the pictures that you will be seeing for this week were taken in yellow areas, so um, yellow lit areas. So imagine what the sky would look like, which I still haven't seen in completely dark conditions. Goals. And as far as equipment and stuff that I'm using um, for this week's picture is I'm actually using my 5D Mark III. And I'm using my 16 to 35 because I really want that wide angle so that way I can get the clearest views of the sky and the widest views of the sky. Uh, this is my 16 to 35 F4. And for all you techie people out there, 
Um, as far as my settings on my camera went for the actual picture taking, I did around a 20 second, I guess, I don't know, let's see. Yeah, I did, I set my original settings to do 20 second shutter speed at my lowest aperture, which is f4 for this lens. And then I, since I have the Mark III, my ISO works very, very well. So I just kept it between about 2,000 and 4,000. I think the majority of pictures for this week, the past week that I've taken, were around 3,200 ISO. And then I just kept um, auto white balance so that way I could play with the tones and stuff in the post-processing. One of the key things that I did different for this week's pictures um, was utilizing my focus window. Um, I don't know if you can see. Right here on my lens, let me see. Right here on my lens, you can actually set the focus um, based on like feet. The green numbers are feet, and then I think the white ones are meters. So the feature that I utilized when I was doing my um, focus for these star pictures was setting it to the infinity setting, but not turn it all the way like this. I actually lined it up right with that little line and that made the difference uh, for getting the focus right with this lens and this camera. I know different lenses can you know work different ways so it really is kind of a trial and error process to see how your camera copes and the lenses cope with what you're doing and what you're shooting. <laughs> of the 52 weeks project and today I'm actually really excited because I'm actually out in the middle of a state park and I actually did week two here if you have been following along that was the wake the warrior it's where I did smoke bombs and I had a sword and I did a very like kind of powerful image silhouetted and all that kind of stuff and that was actually shot at sunrise and now I'm out here again at the same state park called Caesars Creek and uh, this time I'm actually here at night it's currently about 11 o'clock at night. The sun set about an hour and a half ago, so I've kind of just been sitting here waiting for the remaining bits of sunlight to kind of disappear. So I know my hair is probably looking pretty dorky right now. Uh, I'm using a headlamp to um, kind of add a little bit of depth to the photo. This has actually been done a few times before, uh, well, probably actually hundreds of times in the photography world. Um, so I'm just kind of recreating my own version of kind of stuff that's already been made just to kind of play around with astrophotography. So my setup today is actually kind of similar to what I'm kind of always doing, but I did get a new piece of equipment and the new piece is actually this new like kind of mini Manfrotto tripod. And it's really cool because it's actually a tabletop tripod and it lets it kind of you know stand very firmly on the table. But what's awesome, even though this is a mini tripod, it's actually holding the weight of my camera and lens very, very well. Uh, normally I feel like the mini tripods that I've used in the past, uh, they just, they, they fall over. They don't hold the camera up. So this one's doing a really good job uh, so far from what I can tell. And I'm actually, I'm propping this up literally just like this on the ground and using this intervalometer to actually set the camera up for the shot and take the picture for me since I'm literally out here by myself. Guys, I don't know if you can see, but there are raccoons like right in front of me. They just scurried off somewhere. There's a four of them.
from the this whole past week and all of the pictures that I've taken. I've got them actually all over on my website right now. So I've got a link down below to the blog post that has all of the pictures, the entire story from the whole like past week and everything that has happened. Um, so go over there and check it out because obviously some of my like the real pictures are over there and they look really pretty over there. So link will be down below. Okay, so I was just outside and trying to take my picture and I'm getting ready to like go to the spot where I'm like set up to take the shot and I'm not even kidding. I looked up and there are five raccoons about five feet in front of me. Scared me to death because all I could see because I had my little headlight on and all I could see were their like shiny eyes. Whew. It's kind of funny, I came out here and I'm always more worried about humans and I don't ever think about the animals. I didn't realize I parked my car right next to a trash can at a public like state park beach. So that's what they're trying to do. But no, I was literally just looking around the forest a second ago and there was eyes all over the forest staring at me like I was in the middle of a scene from Pee Wee Herman. Kitty. Those head like glasses. It was just like that. Eyes everywhere. I don't know. Does that is that one? Oh my god. No, I don't think that is. I'm paranoid. I'm absolutely paranoid right now. I think I'm just gonna have to use whatever shots I get because I'm not getting back out of this car. No.